Hello and welcome to this lens tutorial from Canon. I'm Rob Crow. I'm Jenny Hare. And in this tutorial we're going to be looking at sports and wildlife photography. So in terms of lenses, Jenny, why have we put those two things in the same category? The main reason is because often what you're shooting, your subject is quite far away from you and also moving quite fast. This image shows that quite well already. Sure, so we're looking at fast things at distance, so that's obviously going to impact on the type of lens that we're going to choose. First thing we need to consider is the focal length. We're going to want long focal lengths so that we can see things at a distance. Some of the time in sports or wildlife photography, we're not going to be able to get very close to the subject. Some of the subjects might even be dangerous. They might bite us. So we want a long lens, and then we want to think about the speed of that lens. So we're looking for fast lenses. Wide maximum apertures are going to let us shoot at faster shutter speeds, going to let us freeze the action, and they're going to minimise any effects of camera shake. But we've got some other clever technologies that are going to help us with that as well in the lenses we're looking at today. So what else is there that we need to consider? Well, fast focusing is obviously really critical. You're photographing over a long distance at high magnification. You might be, say, photographing subjects, again, at distance, moving fast. They're going to come in and out of our frame very quickly. And so we need the technology to make very rapid focusing. First lens I want to look at here is a 55 to 250 millimeter EFS lens. It means it's designed specifically to work with the APS-C cameras like the 60D, the 7D. And on these cameras, 55 to 250 millimetres gives us a really useful range. It equates to an equivalent of around 88 to 400 millimetres. And if you consider at 400 millimetre focal length, we can frame a full frame standing adult at maybe 20 metres away and fill the frame with that person. That's a really useful range for wildlife and sports. The other interesting feature of this lens is image stabilisation. Image stabilisation is really useful. It basically cancels out the tremors in our hands, the camera shape that we might be creating to make a more stable, focused, sharp image. And this feature lets us maybe use shutter speeds up to four times, four stops slower than we otherwise would. So you can imagine that's an incredibly useful feature, particularly as the light starts to dip at the end of the day. Moving on to this lens, it's an L-series lens, 70 to 300 millimetre lens. Again, a really useful range for this sort of photography. This lens also has image stabilisation, but it's also got a second mode to its image stabilisation. And this is a really useful feature. One of the things we might want to do a lot when we're doing this type of work is track, follow an object. But we don't want the image stabiliser to cancel out our intentional movement, whichever direction it's in. These cameras can detect which way we're moving and they just cancel out the camera shake in the other axis. So that's great, really useful. Another thing that this lens has is a USM motor. That means it's using an ultrasonic motor to focus. It's extremely fast, but critically it's almost silent, which can be really important to a wildlife photographer. So let's come on to this. This is a lovely bit of kit. This is Canon's 800mm L-series lens. It's the longest lens they make, and it includes some incredible technology, as well as image stabilisation, again, in two modes. So we've got the mode that lets us track and follow. It's got a fluorite element in it. Now, fluorite, it's a crystal that disperses light less than conventional glass. And Canon use it to ensure that all the light that's coming in the lens makes it down to the sensor. Normally, when light enters through glass, it starts to split into spectrums. And with very long lenses, that can be a problem. By the time you get to the sensor, you might start to get fringing, what we call chromatic aberration, rainbows round high contrast edges. The fluorite in this helps prevent that. It's an amazing thing and it means that we can get really close to the action and keep the detail with this lens. It's a great bit of kit. So Jenny, we've looked at the lenses. Have we got any examples of what they're capable of? Yeah, we've got some great examples here actually. This image here I think is a really excellent example of how long lenses can freeze the subject in the frame. It drops out the focus beautifully. This was shot on the 70 to 300 lens, obviously with a longer range of the lens. Sure, but quite a fast lens and that's critical yeah. obviously because the, the wide aperture has allowed the photographer to use a fast shutter speed, freeze mm. the action. There's also a lot of planning gone into this shot and, and shots like this and when we're using longer heavier lenses, when we're at an event like this, sometimes we have to take up a position and anticipate what's going to happen and that, that's what the photographer's done here I think and it's really worked. This is a really great example of the 800mm lens which is really handy for things like this. Obviously you don't want to be right in there with the tiger, you want to be safe distance away but you can come right in I mean it's cropped so far in it's like a portrait which is great you've got your focus dropping off but right in the eyes is sharp all mm. the way up to his mouth he seems to be looking straight at me yeah I'm worried but it's incredible isn't it because from that distance we can see every whisker almost like a macro shot but obviously shot from a long way away 
This is the sort of shot where something like a very silent focus system, like a USM focusing motor, is going to really come into its own, yeah. especially if the tiger's asleep. Yeah. These horses are coming straight towards you, and if you weren't on the 7300, you might be worried. But luckily, you can be quite far away and still grab your focus. Everything's sharp. You're dropping at your background again. When we're working at a great distance with a long lens, things coming straight towards us, they actually increase in size more slowly in the frame, which gives us a chance to maybe anticipate for longer, certainly gives the focusing system every chance to, to latch on, and it's a, a really lovely shot. And I think one of the interesting things about this shot is you can see that that horse's hooves are entirely off the ground, which yeah. is something that, of course, in photographic history was a, a major milestone, that, the proof that that happened. This image is also great to show how zoom lenses can really hone in on a moving subject. You've got the background moving, but he's pin sharp. This is a classic tracking movement shot. We're trying to get that background blur. That's something we want, but we want the cyclist as sharp as possible. So any movement in that direction, any camera shake in that direction, we want to eliminate, but we want to keep our pan. And that's where the second mode of image stabilisation really cuts in and, and helps us out. It's a good example. Great. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. So long lenses, they let us get really close to the action and photograph things in a really impactful way which we wouldn't otherwise be able to. And remember, we don't need a press pass to photograph the local team in the park or the wildlife in our gardens. So if you want to get out there, find a lens that fits your budget, see what it brings to your photography. Remember, the easiest way to change your photography and get a fresh approach is to change your lens. So